Hello, beautiful people. My name is Dr. Robin Lewis, and I'm a naturopathic doctor practicing in Vancouver, British Columbia. And today I wanna to talk to you about how to nutritionally support your body through injury recovery. So I'm talking about injuries to the physical parts of the body, so anything structural. So how are you going to heal that torn ligament, cartilage, bone fractures? How are you gonna recover from things like surgery, open skin cuts, things like that. Anything that has to do with the structural components of your body. When we talk about how to nutritionally support your body, I'm referring to how to get these nutrients in the diet or through supplements. So today I'm gonna to be focusing on the nutrients that really you need a lot more of in order to optimally heal. So we're not talking about just hitting your basic daily requirements, which to be honest, are usually a little too low anyways. I'm talking about getting more than the average amount of these nutrients because your demand during the healing process is going up for these key nutrients. I also wanna highlight that this isn't going to be a masterclass on nutrition. So I really wanted to make this episode simple so that anyone, regardless of your background knowledge in nutrition, you will be able to understand what I'm talking about. And really, it's not comprehensive. I'm not gonna go over a ton of different things. So there's always something else that I could be talking about. But in my opinion, these are the key nutrients that I'm talking to a lot of my patients about in order to make sure that they're healing optimally. These appear to be the things that are really well researched and so I have a little bit more confidence that these nutrients do make a big difference when it comes to recovering fully from these injuries. And lastly, unfortunately, I won't be going over really specific dosing of supplements because to be honest, that really depends on your current health status, if you have any pre-existing conditions, and really what kind of injury you're trying to recover from. So I do encourage you to go back and talk to your healthcare provider, your naturopathic doctor, whoever you trust to guide you on things like supplements and nutrition, and ask them how to do it really specifically for your body and physiology. The first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is protein. So why am I gonna start with protein? Well, when it comes to structural things in the body, protein is really what's gonna make up those things. If you wanna go back and listen to my last episode about collagen, I really do talk a lot about this in reference to collagen, which is a specific type of protein. But today I'm gonna to keep it super broad because if you learn nothing else today, if you just take home what I have to say about protein and make sure you're hitting those requirements, then I'll be a happy camper. Um, it's also because a lot of the population really are not even hitting their bare minimum requirements of protein, yet alone the amount that is required in order to rebuild tissue after you have injured it. So any type of tissue, whether it's skin, joints, bones, things like that, usually there is a high protein content to those tissues and most of us are just not getting enough of it. I'm not really gonna go into the super nuanced details about really specific types of protein, but just protein as a whole. Of course, if you wanna deep dive into it, there are lots of great YouTube videos, but we're just talking about the basic requirements for the average person to make sure that you are getting enough protein to support that healing process. All right, so are you getting enough protein? How much is enough protein? Well, to just start with the basics, the bare minimum requirements to make sure you're not deficient in a day is about one gram per kilogram of weight. So say you're 70 kilograms in weight, you need to be eating at least 70 grams of protein a day. And this is not talking about injury. If you're trying to increase your muscle mass, so say you're trying to lose weight and put on more muscle or something like that, you're gonna wanna even double that. So the daily requirements for that sort of a diet or if you're trying to get gains in the gym and things like that, it's a two grams per kilogram of weight. So doubling it. And again, these are very rough approximations. You can get a little bit more detailed, but I wanna keep it super simple for you. Now, what about when you're trying to recover from an injury? Well, studies have looked at this 
and your demand for protein can go up by 250%. So you really need to ramp up that protein intake. And of course that is on the upper end of things. So the 250% is more referring to really big injuries. So say you're recovering from a major surgery or you're recovering from like a motor vehicle accident. So I'm definitely not saying a simple sprained ankle needs quite that much, but it really does highlight how much protein we need when we are going through that recovery process. To put this into even more context, that same study looked at how much calorie intake you need to do. So they said that you need to increase your overall calorie intake by up to 50%. And again, that's on the upper end for really severe injuries. The reason I mentioned that is just to highlight how much they're heavily weighting protein. So this is usually in relation to things like carbs and fat. Those are your three key macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat. And so overall, you might need to eat about 50% more calories on the upper end, but 250% more protein. So we really do want to prioritize that protein intake in order to rebuild structural tissue, which makes sense because it's most often protein that is going into these tissues, not necessarily carbohydrates and fat. It's not that they're completely unimportant, but I wanted to highlight that because regardless of what kind of diet you're on, so maybe you're on a low fat diet or a high fat diet, really those sort of things I don't care about as long as you're getting your protein requirements and eating an overall healthy balanced diet. The last thing I'm going to mention about protein, because again, I want to keep it super simple for you, is plant-based protein versus animal-based protein. Unfortunately for plant-based people, a lot of the plant-based sources of protein do not contain all of your essential amino acids. Some of them do, like things like tofu, but not all of them do. So what do I mean by essential amino acids? So we have 20 amino acids that are the building blocks for protein. So different protein sources will have different combinations of amino acids. Only nine of those 20 are essential, which means that you cannot make them yourself inside of your body, so you do have to consume them through a source in your diet. So say something like lentils. It does not have all nine of those. So if you only ate lentils as your protein source, then you will have deficiencies in certain amino acids, which if those are really important for the certain type of tissue that you're rebuilding, that's gonna be an issue. So I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail about it, I would just encourage you to eat a variety of different proteins, especially if you're on a plant-based diet. And if you're a little bit confused about what that looks like, please do a little bit more deep diving into it. There's lots of information about this. Um, I really like people like Simon Hill for his information on how to thrive on a plant-based diet. So it's certainly possible. Um, you just have to be a little bit more mindful of that if you're eating plant-based because a lot of these plant-based protein sources aren't containing all of those essential amino acids. Whereas fortunately for the animal-based people, they tend to have all of them inside of that protein source. So things like meat. Second up, I want to talk about fluid intake. Now this is super simple. You just want to make sure you're getting enough water in a day because you want to make sure that your circulation is optimized because that's going to help deliver those nutrients that you consume to the area of injury and remove the waste products from that area. Of course, this is very important if you had a lot of blood loss with whatever trauma, and that can be a different type of hydration, but just make sure that you're getting enough water. On average, most people that's gonna be around three liters. This will very much depend on your body size if you're sweating a lot like exercise and things like that and losing more fluids you might need to increase that intake but this is something i just want people to be aware of because making sure you're nice and hydrated is also really important for making sure that you're healing those tissues especially in the beginning stages third up i want to talk about vitamin a so interestingly enough vitamin a appears to be helpful for wound healing regardless of whether or not you're deficient in it, which is actually pretty uncommon. A lot of these studies 
are saying yes, whatever nutrient is helpful because people are commonly deficient in it. So if you're low in it, it's going to impede healing. But vitamin A appears to be helpful regardless of what your vitamin A status is currently. But its biggest claim to fame is usually in regard to skin healing. This is why you'll find vitamin A in a lot of skincare products. It's really noticeable for improving the elasticity of your skin, the health of your skin, things like that. So it'd be helpful for making sure that that um, scar heals up nicely, your skin isn't weak, things like that. That being said, not everyone can take a vitamin A supplement. So for example, pregnancy, it is not recommended. So there are some really good vitamin A sources in your diet that can be a little bit more safe. The biggest sources are going to be an animal source. Liver, in fact, is the best um, dietary source of vitamin A. I know not everyone's eating liver. And unfortunately, the other ones are all animal-based, so things like dairy products. If you're looking for a plant-based vitamin A, you're not going to find it. The equivalent, or um, I'll explain, is beta-carotene. So beta-carotene gets turned into vitamin A. So it's like one step below vitamin A, but you can convert it in the body. So if you're trying to get these things through a supplement that isn't animal-based, or through nutrients in the diet, you're gonna be looking at beta carotene if you're plant-based. So this is really high in things like carrots, kale, spinach, cantaloupe, a lot of fruit and vegetables. Of course, there is um, a limit on how much you can convert, but certainly a beta carotene supplement or beta carotene in the diet would be the solution for people who are more plant-based. Next up, I wanna talk about vitamin C. So it turns out it's not just good for your immune system. It is really important for injury recovery. And in fact, it is one of my number one most recommended supplements for people who are recovering from physical traumas to the body. The reason for this is mainly due to its high antioxidant capacity and its role in collagen formation. So as I've mentioned in my previous collagen video, it collagen really is a big component of the structural things in our body. And for example, tendons are about 60 to 85% collagen. So vitamin C is going to help that collagen form. Interestingly enough, most sports injuries can also be related back to tendinopathy. So injuries of that tendon. They quote it at about 30 to 50% of sports injuries can be related to a tendinopathy. So as you can see, collagen formation and vitamin C being a part of that collagen formation is really important. And they actually look at studies of this and they do find that vitamin C seems to be most helpful in things like tendinopathies, um, so tendon injuries, ligament injuries, and cartilage injuries. So those are the three parts of the body that if you have an injury in that area, I'm really gonna emphasize high amounts of vitamin C during that healing process so that we do not have to worry that you're not forming enough collagen, which would relate back to not fully forming a really healthy, strong, new ligament, tendon, cartilage, whatever you're trying to heal in the body. As I mentioned before, I do tend to supplement with vitamin C, but if you're trying to get it through the diet, there are plenty of sources and they are all plant-based. So you will find a ton of it in things like citrus fruit, guavas, kiwis, strawberries, Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, broccoli. There's a lot of fruit and veg that contain vitamin C. So this is another reason to make sure that you're getting a lot of those fruit and vegetables. They'll have lots of vitamin C and other great nutrients in them to help optimize your healing. Next up, I wanna talk about vitamin D. So vitamin D, again, is not just good for your immune system. It's very important for forming things like bone and cartilage. It's not its only role, but because vitamin D is so important in calcium regulation, it tends to have a really big impact when you have injuries to your cartilage and bone. And interestingly enough, if any of you guys have heard of the disease rickets, which was much more common in the 18 and the 1900s, it's a bone deformity that is a direct result of low vitamin D levels. 
So way back then, they weren't necessarily talking a lot about vitamin D deficiencies, and they were noticing a lot of kids would have these bone deformities, and the way to prevent that is through vitamin D supplementation. So it's really important for your bone health. I also want to bring this up because here in North America, where I live, vitamin D deficiencies are incredibly common. They're also very common in other places that don't get a ton of sun, and the unfortunate thing here, at least in our current medical system, is it's not routinely screened for. And in fact, it is always a paid out of pocket test. So even though you may have never been told you have a vitamin D deficiency, if you've never paid out of pocket for a test, then you likely have never had your vitamin D screened. So this is something that I'm encouraging a lot of my patients to go and have looked at because in addition to bone health and things like that, you're also going to want to make sure that you're dosing this vitamin D appropriately so that you can maximize healing from these injuries and make sure you're doing so in a safe way. So yeah, if you have especially cartilage or a bone injury, vitamin D is going to be very important to make sure that you make a full recovery. All right, so last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is zinc. So zinc, vitamin D, and vitamin C are all very important for your immune system and for healing. And I don't think I made this clear enough earlier, your immune system is what heals you. So even though I said, Yes, it's good for the immune system, but it's also good for healing things. They do go hand in hand, so it's no surprise that these three nutrients, which are really well known for functions in the immune system, are also really good at helping you recover from injuries to tissue. So zinc in the early stages is, yes, very good for preventing things like infection, which is most relevant when you have open wounds, but can be relevant for any stages of healing. In the later stages, much like vitamin C, it's very important for forming new collagen. So this is again um, being used a lot alongside vitamin C and perhaps even collagen supplementation when people are recovering from ligament injuries, tendon injuries, cartilage injuries, things like that. All right, thank you so much for listening. That's it, that's all. I wanted to keep it super brief and simple for you guys please go talk to your doctors about how to dose these things appropriately. I'm sure there's something that I'm missing, but this is a really good foundational starting point if you're making a decision to supplement or dietarily support your injury recovery. Last thing I'm gonna say is when you look up these things online, you will find what's called RDA. And so these are your bare minimum requirements for things like zinc, vitamin C, and stuff like that in order to not be deficient. So do not be confused when you're looking up how much vitamin C do I need in a day and it gives you an RDA value. That is not what I'm talking about because as I mentioned in the earlier part of the video, we're talking about needing more than average amounts of these nutrients in order to meet the demand that healing requires. So that's all I'll mention. Thank you so much for listening to me today and I look forward to seeing you again soon.